That's all you got though. Two pieces of chain. I've got lengths. the two links of chain out. And you can see how they start to get worn right there. This is how the chains hook together and ride. And it's a good time to inspect your chain when you take two pieces out to see how much is worn off. When this gets down to where it's going to break, it's time to replace the chain in the box. So we've got these two off, and now we're going to tighten the chain back up. And what's critical in this, we're just going to do everything opposite of the way we just did it. We're going to hook on to our tightener sprocket, and we're going to start tightening it up. Now how tight? Probably if you hear it break, it's too tight. If you hear it break, you're way too tight. So I've gone just a little bit here, about halfway. Is there any and way I've seen the chain moving, so what we're going to do is we're going to look in the back here. Underneath, to how much slack we have here. And that's very good right there. I think we're going to leave it run right about there. That's so a little right. loose, but not so what too loose. To do next, is to tighten up our two bolts that hold the gear in the front that we've loosened up. This locks that sprocket to this spacing. Almost all box spreaders with bed chains for the last hundred years have had the same system here. Now we've always talked about New technology, this is the same system they've had for the last hundred years. Where does the new technology come in? I'll show you in just a second. You don't want to really turn them down, you're just supposed to hold that sprocket in there, like so. We're going to tighten the other side. It's not critical to measure it, but just think about how wide you have it. You could use your wrench. See, that's about how far the wrench doesn't fit in there quite. So you want to make sure the other side the is other the same. The other side's approximately the same. Okay. Now the new technology comes in on the inside of the box. Up until the last 15 years, all of these beds were wooden. And this is the new technology. This is a poly wood, a plastic wood floor. And the reason that it's better than a wooden floor is number one, everything slides better on it. There's less resistance. Number two, it doesn't rot out like wood will. Wood will dry out eventually and start decomposing and rot. And number three, in the northern climate here, if you're going to run a manure spread in the winter, whether you store it inside or outside, you're always going to get in it and make sure that this bed chain is not froze to your bed. Otherwise you're going to break a chain or break something on your spreader. So we carry a scraper and we'll get in there and make sure all the chains loose and everything's loosened up before we put a load in it. It's better to find out that it's frozen to the bed and fix it then than get a load into it and find out you broke a chain. So what are the, some of the so, other things? Do you have to grease this? Do, what are the greased. way that you maintain, maintain the this? The more you use it, the more you grease it. This was just greased a couple of weeks ago. We're going to power wash it. It gets power washed about three times a year. Um, the last time it was used, you can see it wasn't scraped clean, but after we use it today, we have a scraper on the other side, and all these rails will be scraped clean like this one. Now that's the way they look, but this is the way they're clean. And we'll scrape the inside off and everything else. It's said that a farmer has two, pro two blessings in his life. One's a great cow and the other one's one brand new manure spreader in his lifetime. Oh, well, I personally think <laughs> having a good wife is right out wife, there. <laughs> so I'm going to tighten up the other side and then we're going to pull it over to the barn. And... So do you remember what now, what were the spreader right here if you come around the front? <laughs> okay, here we go. Its drive is a PTO. They make the same type of spreader, wheel driven. Now we've had a, 
in my lifetime I've used a number of wheel driven spreaders but for our farming situation here and if you have a lot of livestock you're going to like the PTO drive better than the wheel drive and it has a number of reasons I always think a piece of equipment should do more than just one thing now you could say well this is a manure spreader how can it do more than one thing all it's supposed to do is spread manure so I'm going to show you one way we use it for multiple applications. And the first thing it is, in the winter time when our cows are in the barn, we have to spread manure. When they're out on pasture, they're spreading the manure for us. But we don't spread it directly on the field. We put it into a manure pile. And I'll show you how we make a manure pile with a manure spreader. And then this summer, you're going to see us use the same machine to spread the compost the composted manure or aged manure. So if you're using this and everything's going smoothly, what's one thing to watch for that would make you say... Okay, we're going to show you those things to watch for, but we'll start right here in the front because when you're sitting on the tractor, this is what you see is the front. And you'll notice this dial right here and this, this nice little rope that goes up to the tractor. And what that rope does, you can see the dial has an N, a turtle, a rabbit, and a C on it. And I'm going to pull it right now so you can see it. Right now it's in neutral. Whenever you're not in the field with it, I always try to keep it in neutral. And the reason being, it is a PTO spreader. We used to have a tractor where the PTO for the tractor control was under the seat. And you wouldn't notice it, but you'd bump it with your foot or your leg, and you'd turn whatever you had behind you on with the PTO. The last thing you want is to have a load of manure in here going out, when you don't know it's going out or especially if you have the tailgate a tailgate down and the manure going back against it you're going to have a lot of breakage so i always put it in neutral when i'm transporting it and i'm not ready to spread now what will happen is from the control station you pull this rope there's an arrow there and we'll go to turtle and what that'll do is set the speed of this bed chain slowly going out the back to unload so if you have a moderate load on there and you're spreading it out, you put it in slow. And you'll watch the manure then slowly moving out. I don't know if your camera can see this, but here's one of the flights from the chain right here. And it's going to come up from the bottom and go around and go back out there. And what you want to watch for is that bar to keep coming up and around. That's telling you that your chain is running. Number two that you want to watch for is that that bar is level coming around. If it angles to one side or the other or doesn't look equal as it's coming up and around, then you have a problem in your bed chain and you better turn it off or you're going to be wrecking bars and chains. So that's one of the things to watch for when you're using this machine is that unit right in here, this little focal point, that bar, what speed you're at, and that the manure itself as a pile is moving back. Now in this particular spreader you have to go all the way up in the ratchet to get it back to neutral. Now I'm on the rabbit and I'm going to go to C. And you'll ask what's C for? And what C is for is clean out. And when you get to C on this adjustment, the back beaters will stop turning. The bed chain will still be in high gear and it'll unload whatever little bits left in your bed chain on the bottom. You want to clean it off when you're done using it every time. You don't want to leave any residual manure in it. So what that does is it turns that flail off and just gets the last little bit off the bed chain without those flails pushing it back up into the bed. Now when you're done with C, you push it and it returns to neutral automatically. Okay, I think that'll be very helpful when I'm spreading manure this summer. Actually, it looked like it jumped up to a wall in here. It's in neutral now. All right, well, I just want to thank you for watching. and We're not done. Let me put my tools away and we'll put some manure in it. Well, I'll take some pictures of you putting manure in it. I'm sure the viewers have enough of their own at home <laughs> so to spread. to spread and to take care of and we just well, bid we you put, a very we put manure in it cow manure we put manure we put mulch hay in it 
I've seen advertisements where New Holland actually advertised during the Winter Olympics at Lake Placid where they had to move snow. And they put snow. In I think sweaters. we should, I I think there's a lot of great ideas and we'll we we'll, we should let these people get back to work. So if you like this, see we'll see you soon. Take care.